now to digest the Steelers' loss in the AFC Championship game. The city of Pittsburgh now turns its attention to the Basketball Panthers. Once again, in the thick of things in the Big East, and they hope on the national scene as well. The Oakland Zoo is standing room only for tonight's matchup with Syracuse. Syracuse a perfect 7-0 in Big East play. One thing that both schools have going for them, remarkable comebacks in their last game. Syracuse was down 20 in Rutgers Monday night and they won. Pittsburgh was down 17 late in the first half in UConn. They came back to it. Remarkable performances. Hi everybody and welcome to the Peterson Event Center. Dan Schulman and Len Elmore with you. You've played in games like that. What do those kinds of comebacks mean for these two teams? Well they certainly give you a great deal of confidence and the confidence has to be flowing for both teams but this is also about respect. One team trying to gain respect and that's Syracuse. 20 and 1 but their December and January schedule except for playing Oklahoma State which was number 5 at the time wasn't exactly challenging a lot of people don't think they're as good and Pittsburgh they're better than three and two in this conference this is a situation where they need to go forward and prove something to some folks 25 NBA scouts are here to look at some of the stars in tonight's game among them Hakeem Warwick and Chevy Trout well Hakeem Warwick except for Boston College's Jared Dudley Warwick's the hottest player in the conference last four games 23 points 10 rebounds and Chevy Troutman senior experience clutch He's a great defender and the workhorse of these Pitt Panthers. The Pittsburgh fans on the orange as soon as they stepped out onto the floor. Pittsburgh had won the first 34 games they played in this building, which opened two and a half years ago until Syracuse got here last year and handed the Panthers an overtime loss. Yes, revenge is on the minds of the Panthers and their fans here tonight, Len. Well, you look outside, you see it's cold. That's what revenge is all about. It's best when served cold. <laughs> And the Oakland Zoo, one of the most rabid student sections in America, living up or down to its reputation pregame here tonight, but they are fired up and ready to go as the Orange control the opening tip. And Pittsburgh starts out in man-to-man. -man. That's about all you'll see them play. One of the top teams in the nation defensively, particularly from beyond the arc, fourth in the nation in guarding the three. Hakeem Warwick right over Chris Taft and the Orange score first. Well, that's going to be a key matchup. Chris Taft should not be asked to do it alone. He's going to need an awful lot of help to try to neutralize his counterpart. These two teams will meet again up at the Carrier Dome later on in the season. The Orange coming out in their trademark 2-3 zone, which they actually came out of for an extended stretch in the second half at Rutgers, went with a full-court press which got them back into the game. They were down 18 at the half at the rack, a tough place to play. And then they scored in something like 13 points in the first two minutes of the second half, most of them coming off turnovers. Well, you don't get 696 wins <laughs> if you don't keep a couple of things in your hip pocket yep. for when you need them. And Jim Beheim prepared his team well for that one. Chevy Troutman turns it over. Craig Forth comes up with a loose ball for the Orange. McNamara. Off to Josh Pace. He's being guarded by Levon Kendall, number 14 for Pittsburgh, who is making his first career start. Is now the Orange turn it over. And a look at the starting lineups tonight. Krauser has turned it over a lot for Pittsburgh this year. Troutman and Taft strong up front. Kendall, his first career start, and a lot of experience for Syracuse. Yes, McCroskey is a sophomore, but the other four starters were all key parts of the national championship team. And speaking of key, Carl Krauser has to trust his teammates now. Doesn't have to feel that he has to do it by himself. That accounts for many of the turnovers. He dribbles a little too much. 
doesn't really give the ball up until it's the final pass. Taft got a touch on the interior, kicked it right back out. Shot clock at four. Graves, nowhere to go, so he puts the shot up. And McCroskey comes down with it and stays in bounds for the Orange. Well, that's where so many offenses coming from, right below that foul line against the 2-3. McNamara fouled on a three-point attempt by Levon Kendall. And he will shoot three, as Len mentioned to Jim Beheim. Getting closer and closer to 700 career wins. Only five active coaches have reached that mark. It's been a remarkable run for Beheim, who, of course, played at Syracuse, was an assistant there as well. And now in his 29th season as head coach of the Orange, the longest active tenure in Division I. Well, I talked to Jim Beheim on Friday and asked him about, you know, 27th season with 20 wins in a season. He said, the only number I'm concerned about is number 21. <laughs> and that's the 21st win we're talking about tonight. They are 20 and 1 on the season. Jerry McNamara last year was held in check by Pittsburgh, but the Panthers last year, Len, had a couple of guys named Julius Page and Jerron Brown. They're gone. Who's going to defend McNamara tonight? Well, right now, Antonio Graves has been the guy that Jamie Dixon has asked to do so. Maybe not the lockdown defender that uh, Page and Brown used to be. Browser wide right on the three. Offensive rebound off the fingers of Kendall out of bounds. Syracuse so far, they've taken the crowd out of this game a little bit, and that's hard to do here in Pittsburgh. Well, Pittsburgh, again, just misfiring offensively. Had a couple of opportunities, getting the ball in a short corner, getting some shots. They've got a little game jitter right now. Warwick being defended by Taft, so Troutman is on fourth, who's not a big scorer. McCroskey from the wing. Long on the three, but a weak side of rebound by fourth. Shot clock did not reset. Warwick, a trademark spin move. Good double team by Troutman. And that's the help that Taft needs. McCroskey, no. Warwick stripped by Kendall, and Warwick commits the foul. Jamie Dixon says of Kendall, a redshirt sophomore, again making his first career start tonight, he's just got a nose for the ball. He's always around the action. We well, take a look, the white shirt's on the missed time jump, but Kendall strips Warwick. Warwick was right there. Kendall uses a quick hand. For the first foul on Warwick, Antonio Graves out, Ronald Ramon, a freshman from the Bronx, a sharpshooter, into the game and now for the Panthers. Well, Jamie Dixon recognizing, again, they've had too many opportunities now in the last three trips. Need somebody who's a threat out there, somebody willing to take that open shot, try to extend this Syracuse 3 2 3. Kendall will shoot it from the wing, and the Panthers are on the board. Well, that's what Levon Kendall can bring. He doesn't have a lot of game experience, but people tell you he's one of the most fundamentally sound guys on this team. You, he's watch, him his in, you watch him in practice, Len. He can really shoot the ball as Warwick drops one in. And, and I guess a nice thing at 6 9, Kendall can shoot over that zone. And that's the kind of looks that you need. You want to extend that zone. It gives you gaps to drive against. Browser no on the three. Troutman keeps it alive, but McCroskey comes down, and the Orange are going to look to run. Boy, they are surrounding Warwick, double-teaming him every time he touches the ball. Not this time, though. And that is the 65th dunk of the season for Hakeem Warwick. He dunks so often, that's a stat they actually track at Syracuse. Well, just tremendous extension. And he knows where to go. Once there's a loose ball situation or an opportunity with the ball at the top, he's going to flow baseline. Ball's at the top right there. And you see him just wait until the help surrounds the ball handler and then he presents himself. And with his extension, a lot of guys have to step in the lane in order to be effective. He can stay outside of the lane, that's right. receive, and still leap over any double team that's about to occur. An unbelievable athlete. And even though at about 215 pounds, he's giving up a lot in the bulk department, he does not shy away from contact, does not back off people. He's going to drive it toward the rim. Yeah, but you know, at his size, even though he's slender, he also recognizes that when you get up in space, everybody's weightless. <laughs> That's right. And he gets up a little bit higher in space than most. Krauser driving by McNamara. Troutman to baseline. Had a sensational game Saturday night against UConn. Follows his miss. Now the rebound to Warren. Syracuse so really surrounding the short corner. The ball gets down there. No room for Troutman to breathe. Warren being defended by Troutman on this trip. Jumper over him, short, and Troutman comes down with a rebound. See what Troutman does, he bodies up against Rourke. So when he shoots the jumper, he's a little bit off balance with the bump. 
Just three points in four minutes and 20 seconds for the Panthers. Ramon for three, and he's off. Kendall, a weak side rebound, right back up, and it rolls off the rim. Taft follows up, and he'll go to the line. The Orange a little bit worried about rebounding against Pittsburgh out of that zone, and we're seeing it with good reason. But if they can get Warwick these kinds of looks, it'll all be good for the Qs tonight. The NCAA Women's Basketball Championship, coming in March. Hey, Chubbs, first day? Yeah. No, the answer's always no. You got that Quasimono? Now, I'm a caller. Hi, can I redeem my credit card, Miles? No. That's right, mix it up. Tic-tac, no. E-I-E-I, -E -I, no. Marco! Pull no. All right, are we clear? Yeah. No. Hey, shouldn't they just call Capital One? Hey. Yeah. Go from no to no hassle with Capital One No Hassle Rewards. There's no blackout dates on any airline, any time. What's in your wallet? Oh, I got a couple bucks, bus pass. Not you. <laughs> Do you want me? me, me? <laughs> Do you want me? me, me, me? Listen up! Two hot deals! Get them now! At Best Buy! Come and get me! four-wheel drive. Vehicle stability assist with traction control. And an available navigation system with off-road tracking. The 265 horsepower Acura MDX. Its heart's in the right place, even if you're not. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Acura. Experience the performance today at your local Acura dealer. And PlayStation 2. Live in your world, play in ours. More snow for the Northeast, although nothing too serious at this point up here in well, Pittsburgh. Come Inside come the come Peterson Event Center, a good start for the Orange. Hakeem Warwick with six. Syracuse leading by six, and Syracuse led it. Off to the best start that they've had in 25 years, 20 and one. Their only loss to Oklahoma State. How good is this team? Well, it's hard to gauge. You look at their November schedule. They played Mississippi State and Memphis at the time. Both those teams ranked, but not anymore. And then, aside from that Oklahoma State loss, really not a challenging schedule in December and January. But you don't take anything away from the fact that with parity in, in college basketball today, just about every game is tough. Jim Beheim's team, recognizing that it's a, an experienced team, has really helped them grow into their particular style right now. Now, the last couple of games, they've had difficulty putting teams away. They beat Georgetown in overtime. Close game against West Virginia, and we talked about that tremendous comeback against Rutgers. He's looking for young guys to come off the bench to help them sustain. They haven't really been able to knock teams out, as Jim would say, lately. And their schedule does get a lot tougher. This game marks the beginning of a brutal six-game stretch in the Big East. And because there are 12 teams in the Big East, you don't have a true home at home. And Syracuse has an extremely tough Big East schedule, playing Connecticut, Pittsburgh, and Notre Dame home and home. And that's when the answer will come to the forefront as to how good they are. But right now, 20 and 1 is 20 and 1, and I'll take that anytime. And ranked fourth in the country. That's the highest ranking that Syracuse has had in five years. And if the Duke losing, if Syracuse could keep winning, they could go up to number three. And it's been 14 years since Syracuse was ranked as high as third. People forget when they won the national championship a couple of years ago, they only got into the top 25 in February. That foul on Ramon, his first. But it also goes to show what rankings truly mean. Yes. They're of the moment. And the next day, they have no bearing on what the game is about. McNamara from about 25 feet away. Last year for the game here, his only made field goal was a three, and it was in overtime. His mom and dad from Scranton, who traveled to every single game, look on here in Pittsburgh. Right now, you see the picks up top against the 2 3, trying to get some room for crowds that either penetrate or look for his jumper. Kendall with an offensive rebound, and he is fouled by Louis McCroskey. 
And Dan, the greatest concern Pittsburgh has is McNamara coming off a screen and pulling up. That time, it looked as though Ramon was actually leaning towards the screen. You see him lean just a little bit, kept him off balance enough, and McNamara will pull up any time, any play. More subs for Pittsburgh. Among them, Aaron Gray has checked into the game. A big man, a seven-foot sophomore who did some really nice things in 12 minutes off the bench Saturday night at UConn. And they're getting out of that short corner on Trout, and they respect his offensive ability. Pittsburgh just one for nine from the floor here tonight, and they've been settling, if you will, for a lot of threes. Well, that's because they've really been thwarted at getting the ball inside. They go to the short corner looking for a guy going down the middle and can't find him. Good look for Graves, but he misses the three. Rebound for Gray. And he stepped out of bounds, so the ball is going to go back over to Syracuse. So Pittsburgh with three points in just six minutes. Great story about Aaron Gray. Last year after Pittsburgh gets knocked out of the NCAA tournament by Oklahoma State, the next day they fly back to Pittsburgh. The coaches are walking through the offices. They see Gray in the weight room. They say, Aaron, season's over. He says, nope, season's just beginning for me. And that's one of the reasons he's lost 30 pounds, gotten into great shape, and become a factor. Josh Pace with a bucket. The first points for an orange player other than Warwick or McNamara. We talk about Aaron Gray and the impact he's had. Averaging five points, three rebounds, playing good defense, all in 11 minutes per game. You know, you translate that over 40 minutes or so, and you realize what kind of impact he's had. Now, I won't do it because I don't have my calculator. <laughs> Right now, somebody's got to have an impact here for the Panthers. They've got three points in better than six minutes. The Orange are on a 9-0 run. Browser trying to penetrate. That's a tough catch for a big man down low. And Gray took one step too many. Another turnover. And Jamie Dixon, second-year head coach here at Pittsburgh. Remarkable record, as you can see, picking up where Ben Howland left off. But he's got to be awfully frustrated with the way his Panthers have started this game. Well, again, it's going to come down to the point where they're going to have to hit some inside shots. Syracuse is just packed in, covering the guys across the back line. McNamara into traffic. It won't drop, but he is fouled by Ramon. Well, coming up a little bit later on tonight over on ESPN 2 at 9 Eastern, a huge game out of the Big 12. Number 13, Texas, against number 7, Kansas, at Allen Fieldhouse. And then late at 11, Rodi Turioff and Gonzaga host Portland. That game at 11 Eastern. Don't forget, college game day is on site at Allen Fieldhouse for an 8 p.m. Eastern and then again a midnight show as well. Updating you on a very busy and interesting day in college basketball. Among the stories, I'm sure a huge upset out of the Pac-10. Washington State winning at Arizona Lynn for the first time in 38 years. Well, it's the law of averages, but couldn't come at a worse time for Luda Olsen. His team finally making a statement, you know, with regard to Pac-10 basketball and their dominance. And suddenly, you know, they lose to the perennial cellar dwellers. One of the unbeaten Illinois has already won. The other one, Boston College, is playing tonight at home against Georgetown. Kendall trapped in the corner. And he finds Krauser. Pittsburgh all out of sorts offensively right now. Now Gray will get to the line. But what is it about this zone? It's not a surprise. Pittsburgh knows they're going to face it. Why are they having so much trouble? Well, because the zone changes. It morphs uh, depending upon what kind of offense you're running. And right now, Pittsburgh really trying to get the ball to the short corner. Syracuse is doubling them, so they can't look. The short corner receives supposed to look to the middle. A guy cutting down the lane, making the middle guy on the defense make a decision. Uh, Syracuse is not allowing that to happen. The other thing is, they're almost matching up like man-to-man -man out on the perimeter, so every time a shooter receives, he's going to have a man in his face. You know, the quickness of the Syracuse team in that zone has really been to their benefit. Gray knocks them both down. 16 to 5. Now Gray will go out. McCarroll has come into the game for the first time, a senior for Pittsburgh. Taft has returned. And Terrence Roberts has checked in now for Craig Ford for the Orange. Roberts had a huge three-point play toward the end of the Rucker game, Rutgers game on a Monday night. See so what Pittsburgh has to do. They've got to continue to rebound, kick it out, or create some turnover opportunities in the open floor to get some easy baskets. That'll prevent Syracuse from setting up the zone. Offensive rebound against them will not help. Pace with the offensive rebound for Syracuse, but stepped out of bounds. Josh Pace, one of those stat sheet stuffers, which I won't try to say again here tonight. I was lucky to get it out the first time, but scores, assists, rebounds, steals. Can play the top of the zone, also plays down at the bottom sometimes. A very versatile player for Jim Beheim. I was going to say, forget the tongue twister, he's a player. Yeah, that's right. 
And again, working really hard against the zone. And look at the shift. See, that's where the ball needs to go. And Taft needs to look down towards the basket instead of look laterally because Syracuse is playing you laterally. And Gray's air ball on the three attempt. Taft with a big time block at the other end. But the good news, not a whole lot of it so far here for Pittsburgh. Jerry McNamara and Syracuse have enjoyed themselves. We'll get you caught up on McNamara's traveling band when we come back. Coppers. Flaggers. Shooters. And a little bit of sauce. Fancy a butcher's right in for mature. Right now, we have to get to our traffic report. Let's do that. How about that traffic report? Traffic is Nothing. horrible this morning. I get the feeling. People are trying to get to work this morning. Speaking of Introducing the Acura RL with the first real-time traffic monitoring system through AcuraLink. It can help you find an open road. And with 300 horsepower and the world's most advanced all-wheel drive, it knows what to do when it gets there. We're really trying to get you to traffic. Oh, you know what? My mother forced me to take that in. The all-new Acura RL. Bassett presents the John Elway Home Collection. Home entertainment furniture, custom built to match your idea of the perfect TV room. Choose the fabrics, finishes, and features that suit your decor. And complete the look with one of Sony's best-selling televisions. The full line of John Elway Home Entertainment Furniture is on sale now. We make it easy to afford with flexible financing plans to fit any budget. Visit or enter online and you can win a complete Elway Home Theater. The new John Elway Home Collection, exclusively at Bassett. When it comes to shipping, talk is cheap. Mistakes aren't. Ron's got the horsepower. They've got the planes, the technology. Truth is, I don't care how they do it. I just care that my packages get there on time. Hey, all I ask for is perfection. Other than that, I'm pretty easy. UPS delivers more packages on time than anyone. UPS, what can Brown do for you? Jerry McNamara's parents, Jerry and Joyce, who come to every single game home and away. The family's from Scranton, Pennsylvania, and this is actually one of their longest trips within the Big East, almost 300 miles. It's quicker for them to get to Syracuse. Jerry McNamara, the player, talks about playing in front of friends and family. You know, when I have a big following, you want to play well. And, uh, you know, I, I like that because uh, it makes me come ready for every game. Uh, you know, I can't take a night off because I know when I go home, someone's going to say, I was at the game where you played terrible. Well, right now, he's anything but terrible, but his parents got to smile and relax a little bit. I mean, they're, come on, Dad. They're the one, maybe a 300-mile drive. He's a little pooped. I'll give him that. But, you know, have a coffee. Perk up a little bit. His kid's got eight points already. He's off to a good start. Well, he's probably had to practice that reserve since Jerry was in high school. Yep. And I know what it's like. I've got a high school basketball player now, and you got to sit on your hands and keep your mouth shut. <laughs> Resist the temptation to give the coach a little, uh, a little helpful advice. Either that or give your kid a little helpful <laughs> That's advice. That's true. <laughs> quiet, Dad, quiet. I know what I'm doing. Pittsburgh just one field goal, just five points in over eight minutes of action. Billy Eagle at number 14. The junior point guard in the game now for the York. So McNamara can move off the ball a little bit. Syracuse turns it over. Let's see if that gives Pitt a spark. No, it doesn't. McNamara with a great steal in the lane. Well, that's just tremendous experience by Jerry McNamara. He's seen that happen over and over. Teams that are down have lost their focus. He's able to kind of sift around in the weeds and make the steal. Now, Krauser on the penetration out to Kendall on the wing. Pittsburgh can't even get any clean looks. That's also because they're not passing the ball well. That's one of the best passes yeah. that you've got. Good passes mean good shots. And a lot of the passes are rushed down at the feet. Talk about good passes and good shots. McNamara to Terrence Roberts. The route is on early here in, in Pittsburgh. And the Panthers are forced to take another timeout. Boy, what a look that was by McNamara. Well, again, you take a look right here. Only one guy on the boards, really. Everybody else trying to peel back. And even against three defenders, McNamara with the 
misdirection pass. Looks one way, kicks it off the other. Pittsburgh not getting back on defense, and they're not really hitting the glass on the offensive end. That's a bad, bad recipe. Here at the sold-out Peterson Event Center in Pittsburgh, along with Len Elmore, I'm Dan Schulman. A huge game of the Big East, number four, Syracuse, number 18 to Pittsburgh. A game where a lot of people looked to the orange and said, okay, now the meat of your schedule really begins. Games against Pittsburgh at Notre Dame and a BC and a UConn. How good is Syracuse? Tonight, the answer so far is they're great. They are leading Pittsburgh 20 to 5. And they've thoroughly taken Pittsburgh out of their game. Pittsburgh, a physical team, is being out muscled on the glass. And even when Pittsburgh does get an offensive rebound, they can't seem to be able to convert. And once again, one shot, and the Orange are off and running. Roberts the miss off the Krauser. Or Roberts the rebound, I should say, off the Krauser miss. Roberts, another dunk. Boy, this guy is playing better and better. He's had a pretty impressive couple of minutes here. Well, Syracuse just taking their time and taking what the defense gives them, and the defense right now for Pittsburgh is giving up everything. Browser on the penetration. Kendall with the ball had a three several minutes ago, the only field goal of the night for Pittsburgh as we near the midway point of the first half. That's where the offense should come from against this 2-3 zone. And Taft flashes up to the top and turns and looks at the basket before he'd receive and throw it laterally. He's got to continue to attack from that spot. Then they had gone seven minutes without a field goal before that jumper by Taft, but they're still down 15. McNamara gets free inside, misses with the left hand. Krauser speeding by a couple, a couple of Syracuse players, finds Taft, and he's going to the line. Well, when you're in doubt and you're having trouble scoring, particularly against the zone, you need open floor opportunities to get out on the break, not allow the zone to get set. And this is what Krauser does. Here he beats two guys. And Taft is running with him, which is another thing. Your big guys have to get out and run. And Taft does a nice job right there, just going straight to the front of the tin. The foul on Billy Edelin as Tab gets the bounce. Not a good free throw shooter, but he's got five points right now. Both Pittsburgh and Syracuse, remember, came back from huge first half deficits in their most recent game. But if you're Pittsburgh, I mean, that's not a recipe for success. You can't do that game after game. Roberts looking for Warwick. Another turnover. Syracuse getting sloppy. Well, that time, another body placed on Warwick threw his timing off. Didn't allow him to elevate. Ramon trapped in the corner. Another staple of Syracuse's D. McCarroll will start knocking those down. He can hit that shot. Well, that's the open spot there. Yeah. That's where the shot is. We've been saying that from the beginning. We've been saying that for, what, about 15 years? <laughs> <laughs> but they win a whole lot more than they lose, don't they? Warwick now with McCarroll on. What a move. And he is fouled. Boy, is he quick. First foul on McCarroll and Warwick to the line. Huge numbers for Hakeem Warwick, second in the Big East in scoring, third in rebounding, and without question, a Big East Player of the Year candidate and a National All American candidate. Well, I think the award is his in the Big East. It's his to lose right now. Although you have, I mentioned at the beginning of the telecast, a young man, Jared Dudley from Boston College, is coming on strong, as well as Craig Smith. But you look at year by year the progress. This is a perfect example of getting young men who are developable. Guys you can recognize have great potential. They'll stay for four years, and you see the improvement. Akeem Morris went from, you know, a skinny young colt coming into this program to a guy that's probably a top 10 yeah. draft pick on the next level. Picking back an era or so, not even an era, just a few years. Guys like Atan Thomas and Damone Brown who stayed four years and got better and better in the Jim Beheim's privilege as well. Taft now, the guy up by the free throw line. Instead, the baseline floater is good for Keith Benjamin, freshman guard out of Mount Vernon, New York. The Oakland Zoo getting back into it, and the Panthers slowly getting back into it. And again, Jamie Dixon has gone away from the defensive focus and put some offensive players out there, particularly Keith Benjamin. Pittsburgh 10 G, but Benjamin's about number 10. 7 1 run for the Panthers the last couple of minutes. Pace and he traveled. Well, it's important to get this crowd back in it because they were primed at the beginning of this game. And they've had to swallow that excitement at least for the first 12 minutes of this half. And Pittsburgh now is kind of bringing it out. 
Pittsburgh suffering home court losses earlier this season to Bucknell and Georgetown. They're 44 and 3 all time in this building. The first loss was to Syracuse last season. They'll try to reclaim a little bit of that swagger here at the peak, as it's known locally. Krauser on the drive. McNamara commits the foul. That will be his first, but Krauser and the Panthers slowly but surely getting back into it. Get pumped up here at the peak. Syracuse by 11. Electronic four-wheel drive. Vehicle stability assist with traction control. And an available navigation system with off-road tracking. The 265 horsepower Acura MDX gets hearts in the right place, even if you're not. It's the show critics are raving about. Catch an encore presentation and get caught up from the beginning with three great episodes. Let's rock and roll. Till the first three episodes, Thursday starting at 9 p.m. on ESPN, presented by Toyota. Everyone wants it, basketball's got it. ESPN College Game Day, Saturdays at 11. Filled by Mountain Dew. Wachovia Extra Free Checking with free online bill pay. It's winter, and that means bad weather. So get to Toyota's Winter Savings Blast. There you'll find five Toyota SUVs, all with vehicle stability control standard. Perfect for icy road conditions. Lease a Highlander now for $259 a month, a 4Runner for $299 a month, or a Sequoia for $399 a month. Or get 0% financing on 4Runner. This winter, hold on to your hat and get to your Toyota dealer for five SUVs moving you forward. With any other checking account, you've just made an everyday purchase. With a Wachovia free checking account, you've just earned points towards a flight to Cancun. Wachovia extra free checking with Visa Extras. You try to keep its spirits up here at the Pete Pittsburgh, slowly getting back into it. Last year in this building, Pittsburgh came in having won 34 in a row in this building, having never lost in this building until Syracuse got here last year, a very low-scoring game. Jerry McNamara's only basket of the game, a three in overtime. Mark McCarroll missed with just a couple of seconds to go, and Syracuse won an OT 49-46 at the time. The first loss suffered by the Panthers here at the Peterson Event Center. This is a very proud group of Pittsburgh Panthers. Five, six years ago, this program was not on the map nationally. Under Ben Howland and now Jamie Dixon, they have become great at home, great everywhere. Four straight trips led to the Big East Tournament Championship game, winning once. Three straight trips to the Sweet 16, one of only five schools that can make that claim. And they've been able to do it with defense, holding teams perennially under 60 points. McNamara with a steal. It's the offensive area where they've had some difficulty yeah. over the years. One of the reasons they don't go further, in my opinion, is the fact that they don't have enough offense. Count the basket. Fourth gets credit for the bucket for Syracuse. You know, they've never been a team that's going to put 75, 80, right. 85 points on the board. Right. And even though they play terrific defense, you still have to have the compliment put the ball in the basket tournament time because there are a lot of good defensive teams that you'll be facing. And in Troutman and Krauser and Taft, they definitely got three guys with the ability to score 15, 18 points in a game. Troutman just scored 29 last weekend against Connecticut. But right now, they've got to attack that sweet spot. We saw McCarroll get shots. Taft scored from there. Now he's got to turn. He doesn't turn. That's what hurts. The, jo the zone does not shift until you turn and look at the basket and, and be a threat. And the bottom line is, in that open spot, right there, take a look at Chris Taft. He does. He should be looking at the basket and making Craig Forth make a decision. And if Forth stays off him, to hit the shot. On the inbounds, Ronald Ramon, the sharpshooting freshman from the Bronx, knocks it down. And now Pittsburgh is back within 10. And the Zoo getting back into it. Kendall will check in for Pittsburgh. Pace is going to return for the Orange. Troutman, by the way, still hasn't scored in this game for the Panthers. 
McNamara. Ball knocked away by Krauser. McNamara gets it back. Fourth to Warwick. What a reach. Hakeem Warwick with plastic man-like arms just reaching up and over the defense for two more. I mean, how do you gauge that? It looks like he's got one of those extensions on the, Inspector on the rod Gadget. and reel, right? Inspector Gadget out there. Warwick with nine. Just keep going and yeah. going. <laughs> Trout. See, that's a good decision by Chevy Troutman. He turned, face, the defense sagged on him. The shooter was able to come around and circle cut and get a wide open look. He might be a better choice than Taft to be making decisions in the middle of that zone. McNamara, a game high 10 for the Orange, but Pitts back within nine. Those threes are getting them back into the game. Edelin takes a bump, and it will go to the line. Billy Edelin, physical as always, driving into the lane. Hey, coverage of Winter X Games 9 begins on ESPN tonight with the Moto X Best Trick and Women's Snowboard Superpipe. Live from Aspen, Winter X Games 9 on ESPN tonight at 9 Eastern. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. Eatland missed the first seven games of the season, landing his academics in order, has really become a factor in the last couple of games. Well, he's getting in the rhythm, no question about it. Those last couple of games, you see the numbers right there. And he's also averaged 28 minutes in the last two, as opposed to only 14 minutes for the beginning and the middle part of the season. So he's a guy that brings physical play. He's got size as a guard. You don't want to isolate your point guard with him defensively, because he'll back him down and make things happen. Plus, he opens the floor for McNamara. Troutman. Two more. Now they put Troutman at the free throw line, and he's having some success. His first points of the night. And he turns and faces, and once you do that, you force the back line to make decisions, and off their decisions, the offensive player makes the adjustment. McNamara. Wow. Fourth misses a layup, tapped down with a rebound. Wow, Boy, point he, blank. Seven-footers got to make those. And that's been his Achilles heel over the course of his career. Kendall misses the three-rebound pace. Syracuse led by as many as 15. The Panthers have it down to eight. McNamara. Top three. All his momentum carrying him to the left, over to the sideline, and he still hits the shot. He's got a game-high 13. Jerry McNamara has made more threes than any player in college basketball this season. That quieted the crowd, maybe just momentarily. Krauser blocked by Edelin, got it back. There's that size of Edelin paying dividends defensively. And again, with a guy with that size at the point, you don't want to isolate your point guard on him. Kendall, another three, his second of the game. And Dan, what has happened now is that Pittsburgh is attacking the sweet spot of that zone, and they forced the zone to adjust. And when you're adjusting to the middle, now you've got open looks around the perimeter. Kendall's hit some threes. Ramon has hit one. Pittsburgh's starting to heat up from outside. Warwick, line drive, no. Rebound Pittsburgh. This is as close. They've got a chance to get as close as they've been since the opening minute or two of the game. And they can afford to be a little more patient. There's that spot again. The tip by Troutman, and again! All sorts of good things happen. You can crash the offensive glass because the defenders are occupied. You get a good look. By Job, I think they've got it. <laughs> it took them about 15 minutes to figure out how they wanted to attack the zone, but now they're getting it done, and a 15-point deficit is down to six here at the peak. Well, again, there's a sweet spot with Taft. Everybody turns as he turns and faces, and Troutman able to sneak in and get excellent rebounding position. There's Troutman right there. Everybody turns and looks at the shooter. And Troutman just sneaks along that baseline. Look at that position right there. Excellent job, and he just holds his own. And again, the Syracuse coaching staff, if they were worried about one thing coming into this game, it was keeping Pittsburgh off the offensive glass. And we're seeing how important that has been for Pitt here in the first half. Okay, coming up in about an hour and a quarter, 9 o'clock Eastern over on ESPN2, a big game of the Big 12, Texas and Kansas. And then after that at 11 Eastern, Portland against Gonzaga. College game day is on site at Fog Allen Fieldhouse. Reese Davis, Jay Billis, and Digger Phelps are there. Texas and Kansas. Texas again having to play without P.J. Tucker, but Daniel Gibson 
their outstanding freshman point guard has been sensational the last couple of weeks. 3.23 to go in the first half. We'll step aside for a moment. Syracuse now up only by six. A Big East update and a big one when we come back after this. That brought you Desperate Housewives and Lost. This guy almost got you killed. He stopped me from getting killed. The next drama that will have everyone talking. Blind Justice premieres Tuesday, March 8th, only on ABC. Fresh, smooth, real Bud Light. Come on, baby. I think we lost him. It's all here. He's now nominated for five Academy Awards, including Best Picture. It's about the ways men behave and the ways women try to figure them out. You're getting married? There was a nice way to respond to that. Sideways. Rated R. Now playing everywhere. Scott Reese, Doug Gottlieb back in the studio. A lot going on in the Big East today. Boston College and Georgetown underway. Lewis Hinnant, no. Craig Smith, you betcha. And the Eagles, that's one early 10-4 lead. Elsewhere, Doug, Villanova absolutely rolling against Rutgers. Yeah, Villanova getting hot. And Boston College has to travel to Villanova. They don't have to go to Syracuse. They don't have to go to Pittsburgh. Providence still looking for its first conference win. We'll update you at halftime. Now back to Dan and Lynn. All right, Scott, Doug, thank you very much. So it's early, but a BC leading Georgetown. A great story. One of only two remaining on beats. Their next game available on ESPN Full Court Tuesday night against the Mountaineers. And number one, Illinois defeated Minnesota handily today. They are at the Breslin Center in East Lansing on ESPN Tuesday night. What a great game at Wisconsin. One by ten in a game that was closer than that, Len. Oh, look at this. Nothing close about this. McNamara from about 28 feet away. McCroskey just knocking people down. Loose ball to Pitt, though. Krauser spins. Benjamin on the wing. Misses the three. Aaron Gray the rebound. Watkins will get credit for a block. The big man for Syracuse just his second game back after having thumb surgery. He's got a wrap on that right thumb still. McNamara looking for another three. Pittsburgh comes down with it. Well, that was a good test. That sequence, the test of Pittsburgh's perseverance. A couple of easy opportunities got him blocked. It got back on defense. And now that's the sign of a quality team right now to be able to withstand, you know, some of those disappointments. Big lineup right now for Pitt. Gray is seven footer, Troutman six seven, and Kendall really a six nine small forward. Gray inside and a foul. And how about the terrific pass by Chevy Troutman? Very handy with the ball, very underrated as a ball handler. Troutman gets doubled, steps back away from the double team with the bounce pass. Perfect form. Look at the double team. Now look at him step back, give himself an opportunity to see. And see, he does. You know, Len, the big guys who always get mentioned in the Big East, and deservedly so, Hakeem Warwick of Syracuse, Ryan Gomes of Providence, Craig Smith of BC. Does Troutman deserve mention in their class? Oh, absolutely. He's not as flashy, not as flamboyant. 
You know, it's often said about guys, blue collar workers and that type of thing. Well, Troutman is the epitome. You know, he'll just get down low and he'll dig and he'll battle. He'll make little plays like the pass there. But he's an experienced guy and he gets it done. At the end of the day, the numbers present themselves. Warwick now with 11. He and McNamara have combined for 24 of Syracuse's 33 points. Well, this is a critical time for Pittsburgh right now. They've gotten back in this game now. They just want to make sure that they stay in rhythm and continue to nip away at this lead. They don't have to get it all back before the half. And this is what they've done, too. They've worked the ball inside. Troutman takes his time, recognizes he's got one-on-one. -on -one. Even though they're in a zone, it's one-on-one -on -one situation, and Troutman makes the most of it. The foul on Watkins, his second. Troutman is 70% free throw shooter. Pittsburgh, as a team, not very good. Just 64%, the worst in the Big East. And that's been a problem for this Pittsburgh program for about four or five years. Yeah, this is a team that needs to continue to work with a free throw line. But Troutman and Krauser both much improved. Krauser was 10 of 11 in the yep. UConn game. So down the stretch, they totally needed those points. One of two for Troutman. And we've got a violation, so the ball is going to go to Syracuse. Back into the game, or checking into the game now for Syracuse, number four, Demetrius Nichols. But well, we've watched Pittsburgh shoot free throws in practice today. And they shot them pretty well. Yeah, yeah they did. You know, it's only in game time and the lights go on and they seem to have a problem. That's a problem, though. <laughs> They've got it down to five, trailed by as many as 15 earlier here in the first half. 17, I should say. The largest deficit. The same deficit they overcame at a UConn on Saturday night. The crowds are now switched off on McNamara. A little more experience. And McNamara, good strong drive, and he is fouled. Well, the interesting part about it with Jerry McNamara, you got to kind of pick your poison. You know, of the 254 field goal attempts coming into tonight that he's made, 201 of them were three point but attempts. He taken. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 201 of the three point field goal attempts out of 254 total field goal attempts. You got to play him for the three. When he beats you inside, you got to rely on your help to step up. You don't have to really be the guy that's going to stop him inside. Your job if you're defending him is to keep him from raising up beyond the arm. Well, if you put him at the line, you've got problems. So this misses one there. Six for seven tonight, shooting 81% this season, which is actually down for him. He's close to a 90% free throw shooter his first couple of years. I was going to say, not as automatic nope. as you might think back in the day last year. And, you know, coming from doing ACC games and watching J.J. Reddick. Oh, yeah, that's comparison. Taft throws it over the head of Kendall, a Pittsburgh turnover. Less than a minute away from the UPS halftime report. But Scott Reese and Doug Gottlieb, they'll look at Illinois, number one in the nation, and still undefeated after a win over Minnesota today. A long, long streak ends in Pac-10 territory. And a game day preview with Reese and Jay and Digger from Allen Fieldhouse of Texas and Kansas coming up at 9 o'clock Eastern over on ESPN2. Next week, by the way, the Saturday night game, 9 Eastern on ESPN, and the game day crew will be there, will be Notre Dame at Syracuse. McNamara airball gets the fans all excited here. And Syracuse is trying to break the record for the biggest on-campus crowd in college basketball, which they hold better than 33,000 a couple of years ago. Carmelo Anthony's last game. There are over 30,000 sold tickets already for next Saturday night's game against the Irish. I mean, that's great, but if there's any place that their record can be broken, it's at Syracuse. They're the ones that have the arena to hold the folks. Troutman, a good spin move inside, and he's going back to the free throw line. Terrence Roberts commits the foul for the Orange. So Syracuse fan, going to get your tickets. That's right. Make Number two on Roberts, and if you're buying tickets now, you better be prepared to climb some steps to get to your seats. But I sat up there. I sat way up top. I don't know what year it was when Digger Phelps was coaching Notre Dame, and they pulled off a miracle win the carrier dome big comeback and I think it was Elmer Bennett hit a turnaround jump shot for Notre Dame it's a great venue to see a basketball game. Well, I can tell you this it wasn't yesterday no it was <laughs> <laughs> Troutman one of two again he's got six Graves in Kendall out ten and a half seconds left here in the first half pace is returned for the orange Pittsburgh a real nice last ten minutes or so after it looked like they might get blown out of their own building well, this is all about a stop right here. Feel real good about yourself coming back to the second half. A strip. Would have.
have counted had it gone. But a good close nonetheless to the first half of the Panthers. But Jerry McNamara, 14 first half points. Syracuse winners of 13 in a row. They lead by five of the break. Now time for the UPS halftime report. Guys. Thank you so much. Syracuse playing its first ranked opponent since December. So far getting it done on the road 34-29. Elsewhere in the Big East, it's Boston College by 10 over Georgetown. Just under 12 minutes to go before halftime there. Craig Smith, a nice start to the ballgame. Eight points and a couple of rebounds as the Eagles look to go 18-0. Coming up on the UPS Halftime Report, Doug and I will talk about the Illini trying to stay perfect. And how about them Cougars of Wazoo over Arizona? ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Scion, the new car brand. Scion, what moves you? Here we go. Let's go, insurers and justice. Let's go. Grill. Let's go, insurers and justice. Let's Eighty dollars. Cut that meat. Sandwich. Cut that meat. Six dollars. Cut that meat. Gas. And it's full. Twenty dollars. You're my favorite accountant, Tommy. Please, Johnny. Please, you're my fantasy team. You're my favorite worker. Fans. Yes. Woo. Priceless. There are some things money can't buy. Yeah. For everything else, yeah. there's Mastercard. Yeah, okay. Never gonna wash his hand. Right here. Look at that. Report. It is halftime at Pittsburgh, 34-29, the Orangemen leading at the break. Jerry McNamara with 14, Hakeem Warwick with 11 points. Hi everyone, it's Scott Reese and Doug Gottlieb with you on the UPS Halftime Report. Of course, two undefeated teams in Division I college basketball. We'll update you on Boston College momentarily. But earlier today, Illinois looking to improve to 21-0. and And it was a big day as the centennial celebration of Illinois basketball. I saw Lou Henson there and Kenny Battle and Kendall Gill courtside. They had the throwback orange unis and uh, Dee Brown shooting it from uh, way back. Yeah, and Darren Williams taking it to the glass and James Augustine coming in saying, I thought we have no bigs that, that can play. Uh, I don't think so. And uh, Roger Powell Jr., another one of the understated flying Illini, the new flying Illini. This team's still undefeated. 21 for Powell, 17 straight conference wins for the Illini. Meanwhile, Boston College looking to improve to 18-0, taking on Georgetown. A good start for the Eagles. Craig Smith doing it all again. They call him the cookie monster, and I thought guys from L.A. were soft. Oh, Not come so. on. Not so with the big fella. Uh, back off that there. It's 14-4 after that little baby hook. So we'll touch with a hook shot. So here we look at the uh, road for the couple of unbeatens. Illinois, of course, at Michigan State. A much ballyhooed game coming up on Tuesday. And then uh, BC's got to go to West Virginia. You see Seton Hall and Notre Dame. And then after that, at Villanova. Villanova, the hottest team in the Big East. But Michigan State, they've won 94 of their last 100 games at the Breslin Center. That's going to be a great one on ESPN Tuesday night. Upset of the day in the Pac-10. Lute Olsen and Arizona hosting Washington State. Second half of a tight game. And Thomas Kalati. He killed. Day seven three-pointers. Arizona trying to hang there in the final two minutes. Mustafa Shakur, the pilfer, the push. He had a dozen. But Kalati again with a three. That puts the Cougars up by three. And then Channing Fry for the tie. Just not the Cats day. Think about this. Washington State has only scored more than 70 points one other time this year. That was at UCLA in double overtime. Good win for Dick Bennett's crew on the road. Oklahoma and Iowa State. Sooners have been playing well, but uh, they got pretty much manhandled today. Damian Staple to Will Blaylock. 
We call that an and one. Iowa State by 11, trying to come back. Nice oop to Taj Gray from Drew Lavender Gray with 21, but this one really never in doubt. The Cyclones, Blaylock, find the open man, Curtis Stinson. Number one on his back, number one in your hearts. And 74-66, Iowa State a winner. In the SEC today, Kentucky needed some last-second heroics. 68-67 over Arkansas. And once again, Patrick Sparks' game-winning jump shot. This guy's becoming a legend in Lexington. LSU by seven over a struggling Mississippi State team. Brandon Bass, a double-double, 26 points and 11 rebounds. And that Georgia-Alabama game postponed because of bad weather in the southeast. In the ACC, how about North Carolina? 110-76 over Virginia, and it wasn't even that close. Yeah, how about that? When you see 110-76, you think this was a blowout. Now, this was worse than a blowout. <laughs> yeah. This thing was over at the 10-minute mark in the first half. They had 62 at the half. Wake Forest, big over Miami. Eric Williams with 23. Back with more at halftime after this. This halftime report is delivered by UPS. What can Brown do for you? Brown keeps my customers in the loop. Used to be they didn't know when they'd get their sunglasses, so they'd call me. Now, with UPS, my customers get an email letting them know when their order is going to arrive. It's like I answer their questions, even before they ask. How'd you do that? I'm telepathic. Email notification for better customer service. UPS, what can Brown do for you? Coming to DVD, the great game of baseball is filled with legendary comebacks. Meet the latest. I'm back! You stink! <laughs> First week at bat was a whole lot of just slailing around. How old are you? What do you say, Grandpa? Grandpa? Mr. 3000, the baseball comeback story for the ages. Oh, oh, oh. That's a girl push-up, that don't count. You say girl push-up, don't count. Own it this Tuesday on DVD. Investing is about knowing the waters and where the real risks are. At T. Rowe Price, we navigate the market with discipline, relying on experience and our own independent research. 75% of our funds beat their 1, 5, and 10-year lipper averages. Low-cost mutual funds from T. Rowe Price. Invest with confidence. Request a complete prospectus or profile with investment objectives, risks, fees, expenses, and other information to read and consider carefully before investing. Scion TC with 160 horsepower, panorama moonroof, and the opportunity to personalize. Hello, Chicago. Anyone there? Can you hear us? How do we do this? With this. But that's a phone. It's a phone. It's the web. It's a video conference. Ed, stop hitting the TV. Konnichiwa. Productivity. Powered by Cisco. Welcome back to the UPS Halftime Report. Still to come on ESPN2, it's Texas and Kansas. A big matchup at Fog Allen. That tip-off just after 9 o'clock Eastern time, right after game day. And speaking of game day, the crew, Reese, Jay, and Digger, moments ago filed this preview. It is relatively quiet inside of Fog Allen Fieldhouse, close to the floor, but the last time Texas and Kansas met on this floor, Nick Collison, 24 points and 23 rebounds. T.J. Ford had 25, three boards away from a triple-double. It was an instant classic and a three-point Jayhawk win. We hope we have more of the same in this game tonight. Digger Phelps, Jay Billis joining me. That might have been an instant classic, Digger. What North Carolina did to Virginia, not so much for the Cavaliers. And it was just a real complete blowout from the beginning to the end. 
What really impressed me was when you take a look at Carolina's bench and we talk about depth, they outscored Virginia's bench 46 to 29, Jay. The game was never even close. No, it wasn't close from the very beginning, but a game that was close all the way through Arizona and Washington State. Arizona gained a lot of ground in the Pac-10 by beating Washington on Thursday, but gave it back with a loss to Washington State. The Cougars controlled the tempo from tap to buzzer, did a great job in handling the inside guys for Arizona. And Thomas Kalati with 27 points, seven threes. He was outstanding. They couldn't guard him. Yeah, he was terrific against them last year in a loss, and this time he made him pay with a victory. Our game here tonight. Texas and Kansas, the two winningest programs in the Big 12 over the last six years. Digger, what are you looking for? It's going to be who makes the threes because both teams are shooting the threes very well right now. We saw what happened at Baylor when Kansas made 16 out of 27 threes, just really lit the place up. But also Texas in the win at home against Texas Tech, they made 14 out of 21 threes. So when you look at the threes, it's going to be interesting to see, especially when you see the zone defense played by Texas, to see if Kansas can hit them. Both these teams are really good field goal per percentage defensive teams. I think one of the big keys is going to be on the glass. Which team can control the boards and rebound the ball better? Kansas, eighth in Big 12 games in rebounding, getting out-rebounded on the season in those games. They've got to do a good job on the glass and all five guys. These two clubs have given us some of the more memorable regular season matchups over the past few years. Texas won both of them, but tonight they'll have to beware of the fog. It's on ESPN2, 9 Eastern. Yeah. All right, guys, thank you. And coming up on ESPN, 9 Eastern Time, the first of four consecutive nights of coverage from Aspen, Colorado, Winter X Games 9. We now join Sal Masakela for this preview. Behold the serenity of the Colorado Rockies, soon to be shattered by the sounds of revving engines, screaming fans, and the undeniable roar of Winter X Games 9. At the center of it all, Moto X legend Brian Deegan looking to breathe new life into his Winter X mystique after taking our breath away from 45 feet up one short year ago. Falling to the ground is silent. Hit the ground, I heard my bones break. Does that pique your interest? Live coverage tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. All right, Sal, that 9 Eastern on ESPN. Doug, uh, Boston College and Georgetown. The Eagles are uh, not only a good offensive club, apparently they can play a little defense, too. Look at this. Yeah, their matchup zone is giving Georgetown fits. 18-4, to four. they've been stuck on four since about the 15-minute mark in the first half. Yeah, it seems like about 40 minutes in real time. Uh, Craig Smith, eight points and three rebounds as BC looks to improve to 18-0. and 0. Earlier in the Big East, we talked about it. Villanova all over Rutgers. Allen Ray with another big day. And, Doug, they get Jason Frey are back from injury, and that's just another big body inside. And remember, this is a team that has a home game against Boston College, and what has, is going on at Providence, losing at home to West Virginia. West Virginia team that's struggling, and Providence without a Big East win so far. The other score you see there, Seton Hall, a road victory at St. John's. Back to the Big East battle at hand. Syracuse leading Pitt 34-29 at the break. Warwick's got 11. Second half action on the flip side. This halftime report is delivered by UPS. What can Brown do for you? If you're waiting for the weekend, you A, are thoughtful and well-organized, B, have an excellent reason to live past Thursday, C, are missing out on five-sevenths of your life. Life beckons, and you're holding the key. I'll never forget Stacy. Nursing student by day, waitress by night. Not a lot left after tuition, rent, and food. It's estimated that people overpaid their taxes by nearly a billion dollars. I didn't want Stacy to be one of them. Mm -mm. I got her the maximum refund. We put half in an IRA and the other half, I'm sure she spent it on school supplies. Get the maximum refund you're entitled to or your return is free. Come into H&R Block today and get every advantage you deserve. Assume nothing. You've got friends, you've got beer. The trick is, A, never confusing the two, B, having plenty of both, C, always having something to drink to. 
life beckons, and you're holding the key. Remember when it was 600 million tax dollars to build a football stadium? A surprise. The cost is rising. A platform will add 55 million. A game port, 66 million. A pedestrian tunnel, 30 million. And oh, the stadium gets 400 million in taxpayer subsidized bonds. Taxpayer cost, hundreds of millions more. And climbing fast. Say no to a West Side Stadium. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Cadillac and the new STS with available performance tune all-wheel drive. Breakthrough. Well, at the beginning, as you saw, Hakeem Warwick and the Orange have their way led by as many as 17, but that has not put off the fans here in Pittsburgh hoping their Panthers can make a big comeback for the second week in a row. Well, that's a different kind of emotion from Carl Krauser as we get set for the second half here in Pittsburgh. It'll end week after week. You put yourself behind the eight ball like the Panthers did last week. They came back and beat UConn there. Uh, it's hard to do that, but you got to admire these the resilience of these Panther kids that they they're able to do this. Well, their experience, and you look at Carl Krause, you look at Siobhan Troutman, two guys that have been through the wars. The thing is, they have to figure it out a lot earlier how to attack this zone. They've been able to do it inside, and that's what you do against the zone. You make it implode. You get the ball inside force the sag and then so many things open up last year we talked about how Jerry McNamara really struggled to score against Pittsburgh because they had guys like Julius Page and Jerron Brown to guard him and McNamara with mom and dad and others here from Scranton to watch the game 14 first half points they've got to do a better job against him well they certainly do but they have been guarding the three point line pretty well against Jerry McNamara only two for six he's had to really work for what he's got it was 22 to 5 at one point for Syracuse. It's a five point lead for the Orange as we move to the second half. Graves thought about it, decided against it, then decided to take the shot and missed it. McNamara stepped out of bounds. Pittsburgh ball. And it was that moment of indecision that threw Graves off. Again, Graves, a 52% three point shooter, and McNamara runs it down, and that heel raises the line. Pittsburgh getting some penetration, but they turn it over. They struggled terribly against the zone for the first 10 minutes or so. Then had a lot of success against the zone in the last 10 minutes as they got back into the game. They didn't shoot the ball particularly well, 35%, but nine offensive rebounds. Some good second chance opportunities. Syracuse shot the ball very well, and that's been their trend. They're shooting 51% on the season. Easily the best of the Big East. Troutman with a foul. Warwick will go to the line. Well, again, we talked about Pittsburgh's ability to attack the zone, and as I mentioned, you have to do it inside. Make this guy in the middle make a decision. Watch Siobhan Troutman receive. Middleman makes the decision, and now you just go to the front of the rim, as Aaron Gray does. And when you do that, you get rewarded. Going inside against this zone, a lot of people try to attack the zone from the perimeter. They're too quick, they'll cover the shooter. Go inside, and so many things open up for you. Warwick misses the first free throw, now one for three tonight, and again struggles at the line on the season. 63%, two for four tonight, a dozen points for Warwick. Teams tend to take a ton of threes against Syracuse, more than they normally take. Because the zone invites them to do that. You have to have the patience and the resolve to resist. And now Krauser with the turnover, and he's given it to Graves. Feels that Graves was not in the right spot. Krauser has turned it over at better than six per game in Big East play, more than four turnovers per game overall, way up from a year ago. And it's that miscommunication that sometimes makes Carl Krauser think he's got to do it by himself. Good penetration, delivers the ball, but his man wasn't where he's supposed to be. Krauser defending McNamara. Now off to pace. 
And the rebound off the air ball to Kendall. Well, Levon Kendall just making his presence known out there. Krauser from the wing. Misses the three. Good box out by four. McNamara, nice look ahead for McCroskey, but he traveled. Both teams out of sync offensively here to start the second half. We talk about Siobhan Troutman, an experienced defender. Look at him play Akeem Ward. Again, putting a body on him, keeping Ward off balance. Troutman had that monster second half a week ago up at UConn. 25 points and eight rebounds in the second half in that big comeback win. Krauser, by the way, has not scored tonight. But he does have six assists. Kendall looking inside for Troutman. They've got the right idea, but can they do it? Kendall for three. His third three-pointer of the night in the redshirt sophomore's first ever start. And it's just a tremendous look and play. Ramon did a nice job again of drawing the defense. Kendall's a guy getting more playing time after Yuri Demetrius, a senior for Pittsburgh, suspended indefinitely after being charged with burglary and assault. Warwick inside lays it home. Uh, you got to like Hakeem Warwick. As slender as he is, he's taking the body blows from Siobhan Troutman and using his quickness and length to get to the basket. He and McNamara each with 14. Louis McCroskey called for the foul right now, complaining to Curtis Shaw, number two on McCroskey. You just can't teach this length. Quick move. Troutman leaning on him, he feels the lean, and then he goes baseline and extends where no one else can reach the ball. <laughs> where no man has gone before. Warwick with 14, and McNamara with 14. They've been the vast majority of the offense for the Orange. Now Tap does turn and face Len and kicks it out to Kendall. And it's a good move. Continue to turn and face. That's the attack you want. Kendall off the fingertips of Troutman. Ramon into the game. Krauser for three, and the Panthers are right back in it. And they did it again, inside out play. They explored inside, kicked it out, moved the ball around the perimeter as the zone is shifting and find an open man. Billy Edelin on the floor for Syracuse. This is the closest Pitt has been since it was two to nothing. And Kyle Krause was doing a pretty good job on McNamara. That time didn't get a hand up, but still bothering Jerry McNamara here in the second half. Good defensive change by Jamie Dixon. Pitt looking to tie or maybe take the lead for the first time tonight. Good trap on Troutman in the corner. And it's out of bounds to Pittsburgh. Still 21 to shoot. Well, if you're going to get the ball in the corner and you're going to get trapped, couldn't find a better guy for Pittsburgh than Trevon Troutman. He takes his time. Very poised against the double. Well, he's got good position underneath, and he got fouled from behind by Pace. Siobhan Troutman, in addition to all of his physical ability, is an extremely intelligent basketball player. Absolutely. That play demonstrates that he knows how to play basketball. Take a look at the movement right there. That's uh, several plays before. Ball went inside and outside. And look at Troutman. Just sets up right in front of Pace, sees the angle. Josh Pace really not having the presence of mind to keep the guy from getting in front. Aaron Gray into the game and out for Pitt. Finds a wide open Kendall. Not this time. Troutman up there with Roberts and it'll stay with Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh out rebounding Syracuse right now. Keeping the ball alive and getting a lot of second opportunities. And look at Jamie Dixon just like Ben Howland before him trying to get his players to give maximum effort. Browser misses the three. He thought he got fouled. Now here comes McNamara. It's like falling in love with that three. One pass and a shot. McNamara inside, and he draws the foul. From the other side of the floor comes Frank Scagliata. I believe he got Kendall. And here's the decision you have to make against Jerry McNamara. You've got to guard him beyond the three-point arc. But once he penetrates, he's not looking to shoot. If you've got guys who are going to help you out, get their hands up, he's looking to dish. All he wants to do is draw a defender. Second foul on Kendall. Now in isolation for Warwick. And he draws the foul. It will be Chevy Troutman called for the foul. A physical defender trying to get physical with Warwick. Troutman picks up his second. Well, sometimes you have to give up those kinds of plays. And there's Troutman in a one-on-one -on -one situation. Nice fake there. The Troutman would have been in a good position except he reached out. But Warwick is really 
improved on his first step to the basket. When he turns and faces you, there was a time when he'd bounce it and then kind of spin, which yeah. would slow him down, slow his momentum. Here, he's using his athleticism and explosion to get to the basket. Averaging better than 20 points per game. Second of the Big East for the third time tonight. One for two from the line. It'll be Pittsburgh's ball when we come back. Once down 17. Carl Krauser with the Panthers back within three here at the Pete. Let's dance. Breakthrough. If you're waiting for the weekend, you A, are thoughtful and well organized, B, have an excellent reason to live past Thursday, C, are missing out on five sevenths of your life. Life beckons, and you're holding the key. Let's join hands now, come along to a place we all belong. People, let's get together. Last year, one million people, enough to stretch from the Gulf of Mexico to the Grand Canyon, switched their car insurance to Allstate. Why? People saved an average of $338 a year. How to save America some money? That's Allstate, Stan. Are you in good hands? Let's join hands now, come along. A cool head. And a new copier. $2,500. Dinosaur. Dedication. And a coffee maker. $69. A sense of humor. And a mop. $17. Having what it takes to run a business? Priceless. To see what the MasterCard business card can do for your business, visit our website. You've got friends, you've got beer. The trick is, A, never confusing the two, B, having plenty of both, C, always having something to drink to. Life beckons, and you're holding the key. Pittsburgh, the Panthers are back within three. We're once down 17. Hey, don't forget, tomorrow ABC and ESPN have exciting coverage over the NBA. First on ABC at 12.30. How about Shaq and Dwayne Wade taking on Yao and Tracy McGrady? And then at 6.30 Eastern on ESPN, it's Milwaukee against Cleveland. Will LeBron James be able to answer the bell? The NBA Sunday on ABC and ESPN. I hope LeBron can play with this. I mean, at 20 years of age, second year in the league, he's already ready to come as good as anybody in the league. Just well, he's the most dynamic player in the NBA, and quite honestly, all due respect to Garnett, Kobe, and the rest of the young players, the most dynamic player in a long, long time. Carl Krauser, a pretty dynamic performer here for Pittsburgh. His second three of the half, and Pitts come all the way back from what was once a 17-point deficit, just like they did a week ago up at UConn. And I talked a while ago about Pittsburgh usually playing man-to-man. -man. They're in a 2-3 zone themselves. McNamara, the floaters. Syracuse back on top. McNamara with 16. And so much for Jerry McNamara going inside the three-point line and looking to pass. That time he had no choice but to put it up. And a double dribble there by Kendall as Pittsburgh turns it over. Carl Krauser can go long stretches without making shots, but he hits big shots, Len. Well, he used that screen of Siobhan Troutman very well. And there's McNamara recognizing he's got Le Levon Kendall guarding him. Not nearly quick enough to guard him off the bounce. And did a nice job there getting to the open spot with the running one-hander. So it's Syracuse by two. Pittsburgh trying to avenge a defeat to the Orange in this building a year ago. At the time, the first ever loss suffered by the Panthers here in this building after 34 consecutive wins. McNamara, nice look inside. Fourth has it taken away by Ramon. That's about the third time Craig Fourth has put the ball down low, close to the basket, allowing Pittsburgh to strip him. Got to keep that ball above your shoulders as big as Craig Fourth is at over seven feet. Great. Kicks it out, Krauser. McNamara closes out on him. 
Another clean look inside. Now a baseline dunk down to Troutman, but McNamara, great anticipation for the steal. Again, that's the savvy play of a guy who understands how teams attack their zone. And Chevy Troutman man, just picked up his third foul. All of them have come here in the second half. So we talk about the experience of Troutman, but he's got to know better. He can't compound the error that he made on one end and get in foul trouble. He's, his defense against Hakeem Warwick has been one of the keys allowing Pittsburgh to get yeah. back into this game. Now McCarroll is in there, who's long and lean like Warwick. Can't really muscle him at all. Edelin inside, as tough a penetrating guard as there is in America. Right up there with Jared Jack of Georgia Tech. Well, Billy Edelin at 6'4", going about 190, 200. As I said, you isolate him on the opposing team point guard, and, you know, they've got an advantage, the Orange do. Gray misses the jumper from the free throw line, but another offensive rebound. This time it's Benjamin, and he turns it over. Two on one. Edelin. Nichols for the layup, and all of a sudden, Syracuse is back up six. And it's a Pittsburgh turnover. It's out of the zone. Jamie Dixon needs to talk about it. Troutman on the bench with three fouls. Syracuse takes advantage. Billy Edelin off the bench, making things happen for the Orange here in the second half. It's the show critics are raving about. Catch an encore presentation and get caught up from the beginning with three great episodes. Let's rock and roll. Till the first three episodes, Thursday starting at 9 p.m. on ESPN, presented by Toyota. Everyone wants it, basketball's got it. ESPN College Game Day, Saturdays at 11. Killed by Mountain Dew. The new Cadillac STS. Assume nothing. If you're waiting for the weekend, you A, are thoughtful and well-organized, B, have an excellent reason to live past Thursday, C, are missing out on five-sevenths of your life. Life beckons, and you're holding the key. Hey, Bob. Yeah, have you disinfected the area? Good. Now make a three-inch incision between the fourth and fifth abdominal muscles. Shouldn't you be doing this? It's really straightforward. Listen, I gotta go, Bob. I'll talk to you later. Making important financial decisions on your own doesn't make much sense either. That's why Edward Jones prefers meeting clients face-to-face -face so they can get the attention they deserve. Edward Jones, making sense of investing. You've got friends, you've got beer. The trick is, A, never confusing the two, B, having plenty of both, C, always having something to drink to. Life beckons, and you're holding the key. Scott Reese back in the studio. I want to keep you posted on BC and Georgetown. A terrific defensive effort by the Eagles. They're up 24 to 12 at the break. Craig Smith, 10 points and four rebounds as the Eagles look to improve to 18 and 0. They've already won 11 straight conference games. That is a school record. And coming up on ESPN2, it's the Winter X Games, Aspen, Colorado. Actually, this over on ESPN next. But first, the conclusion, gentlemen. All right, Scott, thank you. You talked about it, how you've got a son of what it's like to sit there and watch basketball games. Mine, a little bit older than that guy right there, is an avid snowboarder. I'm all over this Winter X stuff. I've, he's in the half pipe and the super pipe and grinding on the rails and whatever they call it. I don't know what half it means, but it's fun to watch. <laughs> the luxury of living in the great <laughs> north. That's right. Eh? <laughs> Nicely done. Winter X coming up at the top of the hour on ESPN. Texas, Kansas at the top of the hour on ESPN2. We got a good one going here in Pittsburgh. The Panthers once down 17, came all the way back to tie, but now Syracuse on a 6-0 run. Benjamin from the wing, another three for the freshman. He's got eight points tonight. And once again, the ball got below the free throw line in a sweet spot. Gray does a nice job of locating. Here at the Peterson Event Center in Pittsburgh, Dan Schulman and Len Elmore with you. The Orange 20 and 1 on the season and winners of 13 in a row getting all they can handle from Pittsburgh 13 and 3 
three and two in league play. Carl Krauser has come up Gimpy, now trying to get down the floor, but limping on that left leg. Benjamin, no. Follow, no. Follow, yes, by Aaron Gray, as Pittsburgh is getting great performances from some of their bench players. But right now, Carl Krauser is somewhat hobbled. A left foot or ankle problem, it looks like. Syracuse can recognize that and try to get the ball to McNamara and exploit the injury. Fourth almost turned it over. Now he does. Now Krauser has to find the ball. And Krauser hits the floor hard after the block shot. It'll be Pittsburgh ball. They're down one. And Krauser's as tough as, as tough a kid as there is in college basketball. He's not coming out unless they force him to. Well, he found the ball, but he didn't see. Defender coming along from the weak side. Browser has played every minute of this game and he stays in right now. Three guard look with Benjamin and Ramon, McCarroll and Gray up front. Syracuse still in the 2 3. McNamara went looking for the steal right there. Gray, good cut by Ramon. And he is fouled. It'll be Nichols on the call. You can't say enough for what Gray and Ramon and Benjamin and Kendall and some of the so-called support players have done for Pittsburgh here tonight. You know, they're really executing the game plan. It went into the short corner, and there was the cut to the open spot. Got to hurry and get the ball in. Krauser finds McCarroll. And McNamara comes up with yet another loose ball. McNamara has not been out of the game here tonight, and he's been terrific. Well, what a luxury to have a guy like Jerry McNamara out on the floor understands what everybody's trying to do. That's why Jim beheim has got great confidence in him and knows that he's ready to play. Benjamin the foul. More on Jerry McNamara when we come back. The Orange by one. Where do you get a great value in auto service? From the people who know your vehicle best. The factory trained service team at your Ford or Lincoln Mercury dealer. To prove we're better, we're issuing the genuine challenge. Come in and compare our service to anyone. Then compare deals like this. Get the works. An oil change, tire rotation, inspection, and more. Just $34.95 or less. The genuine challenge. We're better. We're proving it. And we want you to be the judge. Sorry. Winter X Games 9, live from Aspen tonight at 9 Eastern on ESPN. it all the time. Presenting the new Infiniti G35. Available with intelligent all-wheel drive that automatically changes when conditions change. The new G35 from Infiniti. The Nissan Pathfinder has led the way for nearly two decades and the lead just got bigger. Introducing the all-new 7-passenger 2005 Nissan Pathfinder with more horsepower and seating for seven. See your Nissan dealer now and lease a new 2005 Pathfinder for just $3.39 a month. The Nissan Pathfinder, everything you expect from Nissan and more. Yep, a third row. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by genuine Ford and Lincoln Mercury parts and service only at your dealership. Not a big surprise, really, how close this game has been. Two very good teams in the Big East, although it would look like Syracuse might win easily midway through the first half. There's Julius Page. What a performer he was here at Pittsburgh. 
in recent years for the Panthers. A great lockdown defender playing for Pittsburgh's ABA franchise. A guy who shut down Jerry McNamara the last couple of years, Len, but there's no page to shut McNamara down tonight. Well, unfortunately for Pittsburgh, they have turned the page. They're making McNamara work hard, but McNamara will outwork you. It's not enough to make him work hard. And on defense, again, using anticipation, using his savvy, he's made things happen there. But more than anything else, you've got to find a way to body up to him beyond the three-point range, not allow him to get open looks. Edelin and McNamara together in the backcourt. Nichols from the wing misses the three. Taft has returned from Pittsburgh, brings down the rebound. The Panthers could really use a meaningful contribution from Taft here in the second half. He's out there along with Trout. Well, he's been awfully quiet, particularly against the zone. Several times he's received, but really hasn't made anything happen. McNamara the foul, his second. Let's go back a couple of minutes to when Krauser appears to suffer a left ankle injury. There's, that's called Krauser right there. And you see him just kind of slip. Look like maybe a wet spot in the middle of the floor. And that's always dangerous. But Krauser will stay in the game. How about Benjamin, the freshman who doesn't get a ton of playing time? He's into double figures right now. And Pittsburgh has their first lead of the game. Len Keith Benjamin had scored 10 points all season. He's got 10 here tonight in the Panthers lead. Well, he's a player now. He's the first guy to commit under Jamie Dixon. So Jamie's got some confidence in him. Benjamin's nickname, K. Rucker, from his exploit from in the Rucker tournament in the New York City, the fabled Rucker tournament, where he started at 14. So he knows how to play the big game. And again, the suspension of Yuri Demetrius, a, a senior, charged with burglary and assault. Indefinite suspension. Nobody knows whether he's going to be back at all for Pittsburgh this year. It's opened up some minutes for guys like Benjamin, like Kendall, and these guys are showing they can play. Well, you got to give them credit for being ready and give the coaching staff at Pittsburgh credit for having them ready. A travel by Troutman. Let's not forget, one week ago tonight, Pittsburgh trailed UConn by 17 and came back to win at UConn. Syracuse faced their own hurdle. They got, they were down 20 to Rutgers, and they came back to win on Monday night. But from the Panthers' perspective, that's where the confidence comes in. When they went down double digits in the first half, they could have easily folded, but they knew they had a comeback in them. And obviously, Syracuse, they have to be confident. They know how to win. McNamara goes right by Benjamin, loses it, and Pittsburgh comes up with it. Everything going the Panthers' way right now. In the first 10 minutes of the second half, Syracuse has only 10 points. Kendall. Troutman, where's the rebounder? Where's the defense for Syracuse to put a body on Troutman? The same question Jim Beheim is going to ask. It was their biggest concern coming into the game. Rebounding out of the zone against the Panthers, and they were right to be concerned. Well, absolutely. It comes down in the zone, the easiest defense to rebound against. Once the shot goes up, look at Troutman by himself, and he's watching. He should be coming out here trying to put a body on him as the other guys come down. Now Pace comes over, and it's too late. You can't watch the flight of the ball, defenders. you got to find a body in the zone. Get between the basket and the man, then attack. Pittsburgh once down by 17 and now up by three. Don't forget, top of the hour, just over 20 minutes from now, over on ESPN2 College Basketball Saturday, Texas and Kansas in a battle of the top two of the top teams in a very competitive Big 12 and then at 11 Eastern, also on ESPN2. It will be Portland at Gonzaga. Don't forget the college game day crew is there for halftime, post game, etc. From Fog Allen Fieldhouse in Lawrence, Kansas, and the Winter X Games here on ESPN as soon as we're done here in Pittsburgh. And a kickball and a fresh 35. You know, Len, game after game, year after year, people look at this Pittsburgh program and say, they're not that good. 
But you know what? You watch them, and you and I get a chance to do a lot of their games. They've got 13 and three in the Big East three years in a row. They've gotten to the Sweet 16 three years in a row. They've been to the Big East Championship game four years in a row. They are that good. They're tough, smart, and experienced, and they don't back down and they don't care if they fall behind they've got the confidence in themselves to make a comeback and they do it with defense and tonight they've been changing defenses on Syracuse going man and at an appropriate time going to the zone and it's really kind of confused Syracuse in their ability to attack particularly here in the second half and how about Carl Krauser with the miraculous recovery no longer looking like he's favoring the bad angle. Pittsburgh now up by five. What an unbelievable turnaround. Nichols from the wing, the miss. Weak side rebound, Warren. Now it's Syracuse taking a lot of outside shots, and they're not falling like Pittsburgh early in the game. And there's that zone again. Pittsburgh having a lot, creating a lot of difficulty. But on the other end, Carl Krauser once again, just good little head fake. Running one-hander, kind of the same kind of play that Jerry McNamara made earlier in this half. This building is alive once again. McNamara, Nichols has become the shooter, the guy who's getting the open looks, but he's not knocking them down. And the reason is Pittsburgh has now made up its mind that they're going to shadow McNamara wherever he goes. And beyond McNamara, there is no real perimeter threat for Syracuse. Warwick and McNamara Lynn, combined for 25 points in the first half. They've combined for only six so far here in the second half. Nichols out. McCroskey in. Back to the starting five right now for Jim Behan. Looking inside for Taft. Now they have to respect Benjamin. He's knocked down a couple of threes. Kendall will get a look with a toe on the line. Troutman, another uncontested putback. Well, what Kendall has done is extended the defense, stretched them out, and when the shot goes up, no one's close enough for a guy to be able to block out. You got to respect Levon Kendall on the wing. First of all, a good pass by Benjamin. Take a look at Warwick, goes out and gets them, and Troutman does a nice job yeah. of getting by his man. Fourth tried to put a body on him, and Troutman just used foot quickness to get around him. Watch this. Ward goes out, and look at Troutman just use the body, use the foot quickness to get there. Use his fourth body against him. He is some kind of player on the inside. It's a 13 to 4 run right now for the Panthers and a seven point lead over the Orange. Top of the hour coverage of Winter X Games 9. It begins on ESPN tonight with a couple of great events. Moto X Best Trick. That is a sight to behold. And also Women's Snowboard Super Pipe live from beautiful Aspen. Winter X Games 9 on ESPN tonight at 9 Eastern. I was at Summer X Games in LA inside the Staples Center and saw Moto X best trick and you can't believe the stuff they're doing on motorcycles. Can't believe the comeback here by Pittsburgh second game in a row. Did it to Yukon now doing it here to Syracuse. Roberts dumps it inside Warren and he's fouled. We'll check the foul when we come back the break here in Pittsburgh Panthers up seven. I'll tell you what, Pete, some days a Sonic breakfast burrito is the only thing that gets me out of bed. Yeah, well, I mean, it can't be the only thing. It's got to be other things to get you out of bed. Uh, what else gets me out of, um, well, sometimes like an afternoon burrito mm -hmm. will get me out of bed. That'll do it. Sometimes a nighttime burrito. Breakfast burritos. Grab a Sonic breakfast burrito for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Sausage, egg, and cheese wrapped in a warm tortilla. It's not just good, it's Sonic good. Don't take your Ford, Lincoln, or Mercury just anywhere for service. Bring it home. To your Ford or Lincoln Mercury dealer for genuine parts and service. We know your car best, period. That's why we're issuing the Genuine Challenge. An invitation for you to come in and compare us to any competitor, anywhere, for expertise, convenience, and service. All at a great value. When you compare us to them, you'll prefer us. The Genuine Challenge. We're better. We're proving it. And we want you to be the judge. Let's hope Rusty didn't get into your stuff. No, I'm sure he's fine. He's wearing a shot collar. Yes, Grandpa! 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 Yes
Hey man, hope you don't mind, we dipped in your Bud Light. Battery was dead. Fresh, smooth, real, Bud Light. Your dancing is good! It's all here. Scott Reese back in the studio. Want to update you on that Georgetown Boston College game. The Hoyas starting to score a little bit in the second half, but it's still a 13 point deficit as BC looks to improve to 18 0 on the season, 7 0 in conference. And don't forget, coming up after Syracuse Pitt, Winter X Games 9 from snowy Aspen, Colorado. Ryan Deegan doing his thing. You're defending Moto X Trick Champ. It's all coming your way right after Syracuse and Pittsburgh. But for now, back to Pitt. Yeah. Oh, Scott, a pretty good trick here by the Panthers. Fall behind by 17 points every game and then make a great comeback against a highly ranked team and come up with a, an improbable win. It's a good formula, but you, you can't do it every game, but Pittsburgh's trying to do it for the second game in a row. Pretty soon you run out of goodies on your bag of tricks, but right now, again, Pittsburgh pulling out all the stops, going the zone, playing man-to-man, -man, switching up on Syracuse, recognizing that if they can get the ball out of McNamara's hands, the only other option is Ward. And if they can double and triple Warwick inside, they're allowing everybody else for Syracuse to shoot the ball. Warwick knocks down the first. You heard Scott Arise talk about undefeated BC. If BC can win it, if Syracuse loses here, then you'd only have one unbeaten team in conference play. And for Pittsburgh, this would be a huge win to move them up closer to the top of the league. You know how important the top of the league is because it gives you that bye. You only have to play three successive nights instead of four. Mm -hmm. Syracuse back within five. Warwick and McNamara, 33 of the 46 points for the Orange tonight. They might need to find another option if they're going to win this game. Well, this is what Jim Beheim was talking about. Bowser a deep three, and he's feeling it now. Yep, it's all about confidence. You know, when Pittsburgh plays with confidence, when they play offense with confidence, they're a pretty darn good team to go along with that defense. But the point you mentioned about finding another option, this is what Jim Beheim was talking about. Young guys coming off the bench and stepping up, helping them to sustain. You can't rely on McNamara and Warwick and to an extent pace every single time. Taft alone inside, scores over Roberts. Boy, Pittsburgh, because of the diversity of their offense now, it's really spread the zone out, and they're just getting all yep. kinds of looks. That's the biggest difference. Pittsburgh's getting offense from six or seven people. Syracuse only really from two. Everybody spots up along the perimeter for Pittsburgh, and Taft by himself. There's the spot up. This is the play before Taft basket. This actually had impact on Taft basket because now Syracuse has to go cover the shooters, and they leave the middle open. Warwick back to the line for the orange and now he's starting to knock them down and he gets to the line a ton. Krausers had a very very big second half did not score at all in the first half although he had six assists. He's got 11 points here in the second half and there are a few players who enjoy having the ball in their hands and trying to make clutch plays late in games as much as Carl Krauser. Jerry McNamara is right in that category as well. All right, they, those guys live for it. Well, here's the pressure right now, the full court pressure. This is how they got back in the game against Rutgers, although I suspect a much better ball handling team is Pittsburgh, and you talk about attacking the press? Wow. Taft and Watkins had some kind of collision above the rim. Again, a nice job. Once you get out of that first wave, look at the advantage break now. Troutman does a nice job of running a two-on-one, and oh. Watkins was saying, I'm not happy. You're going to earn this. And that was Watkins with that injured right thumb going up there and trying to block the shot. Still got a wrap on it. Once again, both of those guys up. Boy, that looked like a pretty clean yeah, block. Yeah, it did. Give Darrell Watkins points for the count. The tip is good again by Chevy Troutman. His third offensive rebound and put back here in the second half. And Jim Beheim says, don't you guys listen to what I've been telling you. Just failure to put a body on a man. McNamara the three. His second air ball tonight. Now he's really going to hear it. McNamara again. Ramon has it for Pittsburgh. The Panthers are on a roll. There's been a 28-point turnaround in this game since midway through the first half. 
And also we're witnessing somewhat of a fundamental breakdown by Syracuse inability to block out the rebounders. And Jim Beheim told me on Friday that his biggest concern was the physical play of the Panthers. It really didn't reveal itself for the first 12 minutes of this game. But man, if they come on strong, hitting the offensive glass, making defensive plays. And a three-second violation called against Pittsburgh. Let's take a look at yet another offensive rebound and putback by Chevy Trout. Well, right there, we're going to take a look at the battle between Troutman and Warwick. And it was Troutman who got down low and really had the leverage on Warwick. And as we say in football, basketball, and just about everything else, low man wins. McCroskey, two for the Orange to get it back within nine. And Troutman is a devastating combination of strong and smart. And he's using both of those to his advantage. Tapped on the feed from Krauser, and Taft is fouled. Second chance points. You'd expect Pittsburgh to dominate in that category given their physical play and given Syracuse struggling rebounding out of the zone. And that is your statistical story of the ballgame right now. Absolutely, particularly as you mentioned, out of the zone and Syracuse's inability to find guys. Got to find that white shirt. Troutman, and he's fouled again. And that's the same play. Troutman just using that rear end of his. Moving pace out of the paint, getting an easy look at an inbounds play. Well, first of all, Pace has got to get his back parallel to the baseline. And once he does that, he can step in front. Look at Troutman. He just runs there, gets there. Look at where Pace, look where Pace is back. It's facing us. It should be parallel to that baseline. And what has to concern Jim Beheim, I would think, is he's seeing the same players make the same mistakes multiple times here in this game. Well, I got a feeling that in some respects. That's the way they're taught to defend on that baseline. You got to make the adjustment. But if Pace has his back parallel to the baseline, he's able to see Troutman coming, step and beat him to the spot, force him to go behind him. Troutman averages about 14 and 8. He's got 13 and 9 here tonight. Fourth foul on Watkins. Fourth hasn't seen the floor in a while. Dayheim displeased with his inability to block out earlier tonight. Back to an 11-point lead. Troutman now with 14. A stunning turnaround. See, no one seems willing to take the offensive load except for McNamara and Ward. Troutman just picked up a foul. That'll be number four. Along with Krauser, obviously the most indispensable player that Pittsburgh has. And it's still too early for Jamie Dixon to believe that he can afford to have Jamon Troutman on the bench. He's a senior. He knows how to play with four fouls. He's going to leave him out there. Watkins suffered torn ligaments in his thumb and missed seven games, had surgery, missed seven games, came back Monday at Rutgers with a small, soft cast, and now has even less than that on us. He makes one of two from the line. Pace with a big offensive rebound. Going back to Mara, deep three. That inability to block out is getting contagious. Yeah. Now it's Pittsburgh's turn. Timeout called by Syracuse. 4.51 to play. The Orange down by 10. Their 13-game winning streak in jeopardy here tonight. Don't forget, a huge game coming up at the top of the hour. Mere minutes from now, over on ESPN2. It'll be Daniel Gibson in Texas taking on Wayne Simeon and Kansas. Great matchup at the point, actually, when you throw Miles in there, the freshman Gibson and the senior Miles. A real contrast there as Texas plays Kansas, Portland, and Gonzaga coming up at 11 Eastern. Talk about the Big 12 a little bit of those two teams. Well, Daniel Gibson just did a tremendous job in kind of dismantling Oklahoma State about a week or so ago. But they really missed P.J. Tucker. There's no two ways about it. He's gone for the rest of the season. They've got to adjust. Talk about Kansas. It's going to be bounce back time for them. This is a test of their medal. They got thoroughly destroyed at Villanova. Yes, and I think Bill Self really now is philosophical about that loss. He wants to see what his team is made of. Kendall with a blocked shot. Krauser comes out of there with a loose ball. Well, he was so quick to the ball on that one. And McNamara, a little bit over aggressive on the defense, will be called for the foul, his third. Both teams are over the limit. Carl Krauser, remember, then scoreless in the first half, missed all four of his attempts, did have six assists, but he's lighting it up here in the second. Well, one of the things, again, he was probably allowing the game to come to him, wasn't getting the shots that he wanted, 
wasn't allowed to penetrate because they didn't get easy opportunities in the open floor off the turn. Well, he's at his best on the fast break. But in the second half, they got those. Plus, you know, after trusting his teammates, he started to realize, okay, yep. you know, I've established a pattern here. Let me start breaking that pattern and trying to take people off the bounce, set up for the threes, and he's been the recipient of good passes. And he has rewarded the passes. Chevy Traubman going out probably briefly. He's got four fouls, getting a big ovation as Keith Benjamin comes back in. Krauss are learning that the Ramones and the Kendalls and the Grays and the Benjamins, these guys can play. They can help out just like Krauser did as a freshman when Brandon Knight was running the show. And that's what he did in the first half, particularly with Levon Kendall. He trusted some other guys to get the job done. How about Aaron Gray? Boy, you take 30 pounds off, you can get up there and block some shots, big fella. That's right. No more drag <laughs> on your elevation. He gets a running start, but whoa. Big fella gets up. You know, they have lost some very good players the last couple of years, and they've replaced them, we're discovering, with some pretty capable parts. Well, this is about program, and we talked about Pittsburgh's winning this over the last several years. You know, these guys understand what it takes to win. Number four on Jerry McNamara, and a look of resignation on the face of Jim Bayon. Well, again, McNamara and Warwick, the only guys really interested in looking at the basket and McNamara forced that one as Krauser has done a tremendous job on Jerry McNamara in the second half. That was one of the adjustments that Jamie Dixon had to make because in the first half he was pretty much having his way with Antonio Gray. McNamara 14 points in the first half just two in the second half. Syracuse is a team just 17 points in the second half. If you weren't with us midway through the first half, at one point it was 22 to 5 for the Orange. McCroskey fouls Krauser will step aside. Pitt smelling it now. You can go to a lot of places for new tires, but if you drive a Ford, Lincoln, or Mercury, only one place is the best. Your Ford or Lincoln Mercury dealer for genuine parts and service. To prove it, we're issuing the genuine challenge. Right now, we guarantee the lowest prices anywhere on the name brand tires we sell. Goodyear, Michelin, General, and more. Installed by factory trained technicians. The Genuine Challenge. We're better. We're proving it. And we want you to be the judge. most Academy Award nominations, including Best Actor Leonardo DiCaprio and Best Picture of the Year. <laughs> the Aviator, rated PG-13, now playing. We see doctors. We see explorers. And artists. We stand in awe of kids and their potential. It's what inspires us to create software that helps them reach it. Between genius and madness is the triumph of a man whose spirit was as big as America. And now it's nominated for 11 Academy Awards, including Best Picture of the Year. The Aviator in PG-13, now playing. Scott Reese with a Sports Center in-game update from Boston College. It's now a six-point game. BC looking to improve to 18-0, but the Hoyas hanging in there after a 12-point first half. They're back within six, ten minutes to play. And, of course, coming up after Syracuse and Pitt, it is Winter X Games 9, the first of four nights of coverage on ESPN. Hannah Teeter highlighting the women's snowboard superpipe, looking like Dan Schulman there in Aspen, Colorado. Guys? <laughs> Scott, I did not say I snowboard. I said I have a son who snowboards. I'm a responsible adult. I ski. 
Time now for our green light shooting the rock. First half field goals. Pittsburgh just 35. They've gone up to 50% in the second half. Syracuse shot over 50% when in the first half. 26% here in the second half. Well, Pittsburgh's shooting difference has a lot to do with their change in philosophy in attacking this zone as they did towards the end of the first half and certainly carried over in the second half. Ability to get the ball inside, force the defenders to make decisions and then find open people. Also, they've been able to get some open court opportunities in the fast break situation. Problem with, and you take a look at their shooting right now, three-point field goal range. They just needed to be able to go inside out to get their shooting started. Problem with Syracuse, though, is that the zone as well as the switch of crowds around the McNamara is really throwing a monkey wrench into their offensive rhythm. All 15 points for Krauser here in the second half. Watkins the rebound. Another block by Aaron Gray. It's hard to say a seven-footer coming out of nowhere, but that's what it felt like with Darrell Watkins. who thought he had a chippy. Gray playing a lot more this year than last year and playing a lot better. Kendall playing a lot more the last few games after Demetrius was suspended. Benjamin with 10 points tonight, as many as he's had the entire season coming into this game. It has truly been a team effort for the Panthers tonight. And again, this is what comebacks will do for teams, give them extreme confidence. And a foul away from the ball on Kendall. His fourth. 3.04 to go. Pittsburgh once down 17, now up 14. Here at the Peterson Event Center, Dan Schulman and Len Elmore with you. Winner X Games 9 from Aspen. Coming up next, as soon as this game is over, Moto X best trick. And also some snowboarding coming your way as well. So stick around for that. Ramon gets a hand on the ball, but it's out of bounds to the orange. It's been a game of, of two halves, if you will, two different halves for Pittsburgh. As they figured out the zone and applied their defense. Warwick is fouled. Gray will be called for the foul, his first. And you know what? I like that foul. Yep. You know, no easy baskets now for Syracuse. Even though you stop the clock, and the clock is your best friend if you're Pittsburgh. And also, you don't allow Hakeem Warwick to make any statements. Because <laughs> that would have been an exclamation. He makes some loud statements. You're right. In a short statement right there. How about this statement, Len? Last year, Pittsburgh held Syracuse to 45 points up at the carrier day. Then here, even though Pittsburgh lost, is now trapped in terms of the Even though Pittsburgh lost, they held Syracuse to 49 points, and that was an overtime game. Now tonight, they've only got 52. And right now, they're on pace yep. to be the ninth victim of Pittsburgh to be held to 60 points or less. That's what I've said before Pittsburgh does it with defense they change their defenses they've gotten stickier to Jerry McNamara and that's really buoyed their confidence and triggered their offense just get it going over on ESPN 2 from Allen Fieldhouse Texas and Kansas two of the heavyweights in the Big 12. Winter X Games 9 after us here at the end of this game. Krauser trapped finds the open man and from close range another easy two for Chevy Troutman. I said to you during the break, these guys are like an acquired taste, Pittsburgh, as McNamara hits the three and is fouled. But the more you watch Pittsburgh play, the more you appreciate how good they really are. Well, and certainly you got to watch them for long periods of time because, as we mentioned, no real flamboyance on this team except maybe Carl Krauser and some of his passes. But the bottom line is they play as a team, they play defense. They will outwork you on the backboard and even out on the perimeter. They'll go after loose balls and they'll challenge you physically. Syracuse continuing to press, trying to force turnovers. Ramon out there is a second ball handler right now, along with Krauser when they get it over as Benjamin helps out as well. Less than two minutes away from what looks like a Pittsburgh win, and less than two minutes away from Winter X Games 9 here on ESPN. And then remember way back at the beginning of the telecast, you asked me, obviously, if Syracuse is that good. Syracuse is good, but, you know, we obviously see exactly what Jim Beheim was speaking about, the inability of getting a lift from his bench and yeah. from the younger players who are still in a development process. Now they will be good. When you have a team like Jerry McNamara and Hakeem Warwick and to, as I said, a lesser extent, Josh Pace, you've got a nucleus there. But they need help. They need guys to step up, be more aggressive, and more importantly, 
to do what you can possibly do fundamentally, including block people out. McNamara heating up now, and Syracuse has it down to eight. Now, Jim Beheim has said repeatedly this team will go as far as the sophomores will take them. He knows what he'll get from the upperclassmen. And now they're going to force Pittsburgh to earn it at the line. And remember, as a team, Pittsburgh is the worst free throw shooting team in the Big East. We well, got a 70% shooter on the line right here. Ronald Ramon are about 73%. So he got some pretty good free throw shooters out there. Ramon and Crowder. Ramon showing some poise. The freshman out of the Bronx. He and Benjamin, both freshmen, both big contributors in the backcourt tonight for Pittsburgh. Two free throws for Ramon. The lead back to 10. And Kendall will return for Benjamin. And that's a good move Jamie Dixon makes. He gets Benjamin out of there, who hasn't had much experience on the line, and brings in Kendall, who's 7 for 10 coming into this game. The cutting McCluskey will score. But Syracuse can't ill afford to trade points right now. They need some steals. Where was McCluskey with that move, that aggression <laughs> yep. earlier in the game? Time out here with 57 seconds to go. Pittsburgh by eight. Now a Winter X Games update with Sal Masakin. Thank you very much, Dan. You are looking at Buttermilk Mountain, the home of Winter X Games 9. 28 degrees this evening. Nice weather and the light snow. We are anticipating the Moto X prelims. Let me show you Brian Deegan last year coming in here looking to win. Brian Deegan, the worst crash in X Games history, shatters his femur and breaks both wrists. However, he is back here this year searching for gold. Earlier tonight, Jim McNeil, his first X Games ever in practice, attempting the backflip, has to bail the bike. Amazingly, McNeil comes up only with a concussion and some bruises. This is all coming up next after the game. Back to you, Dan. All right, Sal, thank you. Man, I thought the Panthers were tough. Those Winter X guys getting after it on Moto X, which you'll see after this game. Pittsburgh into the final minute. Now up by 10. That's your exclamation point right there from Chevy Troutman. And it was a model of experience as Troutman just held up a little bit as that pass was underthrown just to freeze McNamara and still able to grab it. That's Chevy Troutman in a nutshell using guile experience and effort. Another three for McNamara. He's got 26 but the big story tonight another remarkable comeback by the Pitt Panthers came back from 17 down to beat UConn a week ago. This is their next game they hadn't played since then came back from 17 down tonight now lead Syracuse by seven look at their upcoming schedule Monday night here against Providence ESPN 2 Saturday night you and I'll be down at Morgantown ESPN 2 as they take on West Virginia they still have to play Syracuse again up at the carrier Dome. They'll have UConn here. They've got Notre Dame coming here in a couple of weeks in a game that you or I'll do. And look at how hard Jamie Dixon is working his team. Well, during that stretch we just saw, three out of those five games are going to be at home. And that's a major advantage for most teams. But playing here is like a house of horrors for the visitors. Pace on the penetration. And the three from the wing goes in for Hakeem Warren. His seventh made three. Syracuse back within six, 33 seconds to go. Syracuse came into this game 20 and one, but with the real meat of their schedule beginning tonight. Take a look at their next five games. Well, again, uh, Connecticut playing Pittsburgh at their place. And at Villanova, Villanova, we've seen what they're capable of doing. None of those games are easy. And then finally, in this stretch at Boston College, boy, we talked about whether or not Syracuse was the type of team to belong in the top three obviously they're probably going to drop a few notches now if they ever were this is the way you determine it by this type of schedule by the way Villanova routed Rutgers earlier today last score we had Georgetown was making it interesting at Boston College against one of the nation's two remaining unbeaten teams Syracuse just one loss prior to tonight to Oklahoma State but in danger here tonight while well, we've got a moment back to the studio Guys, we'll update you on that Boston College Georgetown game. The Eagles trying to go to 18 and 0, but the Hoyas giving them a ball game now. 42-37 BC. The Eagles have not hit a single three-point bucket, but they're up five with six to play. Dan and Lynn. 
Now Georgetown, as you guys mentioned, held to 12 points in the first half. Making a game of it in the second half against BC. Winner, X Games 9, next here on ESPN. Syracuse out of timeouts. Down by six, 33 seconds to go. Browser splits the double team, and he's fouled. It has been a huge second half for Carl Krauser, a very big second half for Siobhan Troutman. And I think about four guys could share the Oscar for best supporting actor tonight in the white uniforms with Ramon and Benjamin and Gray and Kendall all doing their share. The one guy who's really been quiet the whole night and hasn't played a whole lot in the second half, Chris Taft. I mean, down the road, they need more from him. Oh, they certainly do, and he needs to look at him and he needs to play with confidence. Now, that's a huge shot because game is only a two possession ball game and particularly with the way Syracuse is hitting the threes of late you know could make Pittsburgh a little bit queasy but this gives them a little more breathing room hitting those two free throws now they've got to be able to guard the three point line and look at Ramon just all over Jerry McNamara denying him the ball at the top of the screen 19 points for Krauser all of them in the second half Warwick just forces up a three and a foul is called on Chevy Troutman. Jim Burr rings up Chevy Troutman, who just fouled out of the game. It ain't over yet, folks. Not yet. Boy, I don't know if it was a, a ticky tack call or not. We'll get another look, but you just got to back off, Warwick. I mean, you can't send him to the line for three. I mean, he's a 35% shooter, which is not bad. Look at that long stride as he steps back. And Troutman tries to block the shot. You are not going to block that. You He's cannot, contested. Right. You cannot put yourself in a position to have a foul call. Run to the side of him. I guess he's telling the official that he avoided the contact, but he was too close. So you stop the clock, and Warwick gets a chance to shoot the three free throws. He's not a great free throw shooter, but if you're Pittsburgh, you just want to keep this clock running. A great effort by Troutman. That foul notwithstanding. 18 points on the night. Again, the bulk of his damage in the second half and the pit coaches will tell you he's as well conditioned as any player on the team and that's why he's able to keep going when everybody else gets tired. Well, he's a perpetual motion machine no doubt about it. Warwick a perpetual motion machine as well. Struggles at the line though. Winner X Games 9 immediately following the conclusion of this game here on ESPN. Texas and Kansas with the college game day crowd over on ESPN 2 already underway. Ray is going to come back into the game now for Pittsburgh. And Team Warwick, as we mentioned, gets to the line as much just about as any player in college basketball. Big improvement from his freshman year, but still not what you'd call a good free throw shooter. We're back to a two possession ball game, so Pittsburgh cannot relax. They've got to be able to take the foul or beat the press. Ramon will go back to the line. Warwick commits the foul, his fourth. Now you know in Big East play, especially when you play Pittsburgh, it's going to be physical. Whether you're a physical team or not, you're going to have to step up the physical play against Pittsburgh. Well, you got to be willing to bump shoulders yep. and you know lock arms and bang hips when you play Pittsburgh. Find out exactly what the officials are going to give you. Ramon misses the first, still a two-possession game. Syracuse's win streak, the third longest active streak in Division I. Illinois won today. Boston College leading Georgetown right now in a close game. Big free throw there to make it a three-possession game, assuming nobody fouls McNamara as he attempts a three. He didn't even have that one in his hand yeah. that time. McNamara just couldn't get the grip. Yeah. And Pittsburgh's going to win it. From 17 down in the first half, they beat Syracuse just like they did up in UConn last week. What a performance by Troutman Krauser and the Panthers to snap Syracuse's 13-game winning streak. The final for the Peterson Event Center, Pittsburgh 76, Syracuse 69. Winner X is next. For Len Elmore and our entire ESPN crew, I'm Dan Shulman. Thanks for watching. Good night.